Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter number one, verse number 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter one, verse number 19. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Everybody say a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The word more reflects the preceding verses in Second Peter chapter number 1 where Peter is relaying the story of he and James and John that they went on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. And he's recounting that the voice they heard from heaven and it confirmed the heavenly authority and pleasure in Jesus Christ. But he reminds us and lets us know for those of us who have never heard, how many have never heard a voice from heaven before, an audible voice? I haven't. I've never heard an audible voice from heaven and he reminds us for, for, for the majority of the world that have never heard a distinct audible voice from heaven that we have a more sure word of prophecy. There is something that's more settled, that's more for sure, that you can rest your faith in more than even hearing a voice. And that's the word of the Lord God Almighty. That is the word from Genesis to Revelation. It will tell you what you got to do to be saved, what you got to do to stay saved, and it will help you do it. Amen. I'm glad that I fell in love with the Word of God. I'm glad that I've had it taught and told to me, but I'm glad more than anything, and anybody that wants to can have the revelation of the power of the Holy Ghost through the Word of God. Peter says, and we would do well. It is a good thing. Take my advice. Listen to what I'm about to say. We would do well to take heed, which means to listen to learn and in fact apply the scriptures to our lives. We would do well to take heed. We would do well to listen to what the word says, to learn what the word of God says, and then apply those scriptures to our life. And he speaks metaphorically of the revelation of scripture. How, how many of you know if you begin to study it and you begin to pray over it, I've told you all this before, some people like to say, well, I don't understand the Bible. Let me tell you what I do because I don't understand everything in the Bible either, Brother Pete. And I come across scriptures. Uh, let me tell you what I do, Brother David. I open it to that passage and, and I read it and I read it and I read it and when I don't understand it, uh, I lay it before God. And I say, now, Lord, I'm not quite getting this. I need some help. And Sister Eloise, I'll read it again and again and again until I get it because I've got something in me that wants to know what the Lord says and everything the Lord said applies to me. Everything the Scripture said is going to help me. And if God said it, I'm interested in it. And He wants us, God have mercy, He wants us to know what He says. Search the Scriptures. The Bible said, for in them you think you find the words to eternal life. I'm interested in knowing how to get out of this life alive. I'm interested in knowing what it takes to make it to heaven where I can live with the Lord in eternity. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to burn in the devil's hell. And this is how I find it out. It's in the word of God. And the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, take heed. You would do well to take heed, which means to apply it. Listen, learn, apply it. And then he begins to speak. If you do that, if you do that, he speaks metaphorically of the revelation of the scriptures shining into our hearts. And just like the sun breaks through the night at the dawning of a new day, there will be a, 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 a moment when the explosion goes off in your mind and you realize what the Lord has in store for you. It's the word of God, a more sure word of prophecy and the revelation that will come at the reading of the word of God. 
the revelation that will come will be like the sun breaking through the darkest night. How many of you have ever heard it gets just the darkest? Right before the dawn. Oh, God. As a light that shines into a dark place. I'm thinking, thank God that I'm allowed to be the pastor of this church. But I thank God even more that the people that I pastor can't see into my mind. Brother Shannon, it's a dark place. It's a dark place. Not, not that we haven't been regenerated by the power of the Holy Ghost, but Brother Dole, when I look back down the road and I see the mess I got myself into because of my ignorant thinking, it was a dark place. A dark place. Until the light. Until the light shined into me. And the day star. And the day star, that refers to the natural light of the planet Venus. It's commonly referred to by astronomers and in ancient of days as the morning star. And that is a spiritual reference to Jesus Christ who will arise in your hearts. He will arise. You will be led by the scripture to the place God wants you to be. How many of you know that he don't play games? He don't play hide and seek. He don't play any, meeny, mighty, mo. It's a sure word of prophecy. As a light that shines into a dark place, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Ephesians 4 and 4 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who's a Father of all, above all, through all, and in you all. There's just one way to salvation, and it's His way. It's not my way. It's not your way. It's not the church down the street's way, but it's His way. I just got to know what he says. That's a sure word of prophecy. A sure word of prophecy. There are numerous Old Testament prophecies concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to list off a few of them. Brother Shannon, you don't have to go there. Genesis 49 and 10 tells us that he will come from the Jewish tribe of Judah. Micah 5 and 2 tells us that he would be born in Bethlehem. Isaiah 7 and 14 tells us that he would be born of a virgin. Isaiah 53 and 3 tells us he would be rejected by his own people. Psalm 41 and 9 tells us he would be betrayed by a friend. Zechariah 11 and 12 tells us that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And there are many more that I could give you. There are many more prophecies and ramifications of those prophecies. But the important thing that I want you to know is that every prophetic utterance of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament came to pass in his actual life. There were no mistakes. There were no misinterpreting. There was no missing the mark. Every prophecy, every direct prophecy and over 200 ramifications of those prophecies came to pass in the life of Jesus Christ. They were prophesied up to 2,000 years before his birth, but they all came to pass. An important prophecy that I want to share with you today is found in Isaiah chapter number 9. I think it's important to read what Jesus was to mean to mankind. I think it's important to read and to understand what he means to the world. Uh, uh, it's speaking, uh, 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 speaking um, I don't want to use the word generically, but speaking uh, as, a, as a group, as a whole, what he means to the entire world. I think it's important to know that, that Jesus came to save the world from their sins. I think it's important to know that Jesus came into the world and he created the world. Well, the world was made by him and the world knew him not. I think it's important to notice that. Uh, but what I want to minister to us about this, this morning uh, that I'm really interested in what he means to me. Now I'm going to be excited at what the Lord does in your life. And I'm going to preach and I'm going to share and I'm going to tell what the Lord can do in your life. But when it comes down to where the rapture takes place, uh, I got to make sure I'm right. And the beautiful thing is, uh, is, is I've had several people tell me lately that they wanted to come down here and join our church. You can come all you want to. You can sit on a pew, but joining any church don't save you. It won't save you. You can get your name on the roll. 
You can be faithful in your tithes and offerings. You can look the part, act the part, show up all the time, but that don't save you. It doesn't save you. Join in the church. We got to be born into the body of Christ, born again of water and of spirit. My salvation is the most important thing that I'll ever receive. There's no paycheck, there's no car, there's no house, there's no friendship, there's no fame, there's no fortune, there's nothing that's more important in the world than my salvation. But here's the deal is the hope that he gives me is what causes me to be able to help others. The hope that he gives me is what causes me to be able to help others. I have hope. The theme of Isaiah chapter 9 is that there will be no more gloom or no more darkness. Keep, keep in mind that our text said, as a light that shineth into a dark place. There will be no more darkness. There will be no more shadows over the kingdom of Israel. The Jews typically expected redemption or release to come from a man rising up. A man would rise up. Remember what happened in Egypt? The Lord brought Moses up to lead him out. Every time, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, the Lord always had a prophet or a man of God that would lead the people. Gideon, remember Gideon, remember Jephthah in the Old Testament. Always a man rose up, anointed by God, to lead the people out of bondage. And Isaiah's words that I'm about to read to you do nothing to change that way of thinking, at least on the surface. I, on the surface. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us, everybody say us. us. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. So come on, don't be shy, don't be chicken. The mighty God. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Unto, God help me right now. Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. I don't know about you, but the, all of these doom and gloom people that talk about uh, that things are just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, Brother Peter, this scripture blows that all to pieces uh, because the Bible said of his kingdom, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. What does that mean? That means uh, those under his authority are going to keep growing. There's going to be people still coming in all the way to the end. Of the increase. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now we, with the benefit of hindsight, and you've probably heard this quoted or talked about at Christmas time, but with the benefit of hindsight, we know that Isaiah was speaking of the coming Savior, which is Jesus Christ, right? We know that Isaiah 9 and 6 and 7 is talking about Jesus coming. When Jesus came, he in fact fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah, right? He fulfilled those prophecies, but he was not received by those he was sent to because he didn't fit their idea of what a king should be like. He refused to go to the, the courts and the halls of the palace instead walking and eating and drinking with the common man. Sitting down with the publicans who in the eyes of the Jews were traitors. The publicans were Jewish people that had went over to the Roman side and they collected taxes of the Jews for the Romans. Jesus sat down and ate with the publicans and the sinners. He visited with women of bad morals and reputations and in fact ministered to them instead of condemning them and at least one case he refused to stone a woman all the while knowing that the law said he should. 
Make no mistake. Please don't misunderstand. Jesus was everything that they needed him to be. Jesus, oh God, help me. Come on, Holy Ghost. He was everything that they desired. He was everything that they wanted. He was everything that they needed. Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, meaning he is the strength of the law. The law rests upon him. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And his government and his peace shall continually grow as long as time exists. Now, I got, you got to understand something today. What I just read to you in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, the Jews had those same scriptures. The Jews of Jesus' day had those same scriptures to read and understand. Jesus, let me tell you, Jesus healed the sick. He raised the dead. He performed many mighty miracles. He walked on the water. He called the dead to come out of the tomb. He, he opened the blinded eyes. He did so many things. He, he healed. He, he delivered crowds thronged to follow him. In short, Jesus was wonderful. He at 12 years of age, Brother David, at 12 years of age, he confounded the wisdom of the scribes in the temple. He spoke into the lives of the afflicted and the poor, and they were blessed. He took a scraggly band of fishermen and misfits and made disciples out of them. In short, he was a counselor. He cast out devils, healed the minds of the oppressed and possessed. He called the dead out of the tomb. He spoke and disease was removed. In one case, he spoke it from afar, never seeing the afflicted. Leprosy, blindness, palsy, withered hands, etc. were healed. He called people by name that he had never met. In short, he was the mighty God. He he fed 5,000. He fed 4,000 out of compassion for the multitude with two small meals. He called the children to them and instructed his followers to never push them away. He showed compassion on the degraded and the poor and those that are in the gutter. In fact, he was the everlasting father. He spoke to the wind and the seas became calm. He took all of the abuse at his trial, scourging, and crucifixion. He cast devils out of tormented people, and you found them clothed and setting in their right minds. In short, he was the prince of peace. Why couldn't they see? Why couldn't they understand? Why couldn't they accept him in light of all the miracles that he did? Because they tried to see him through natural eyes. They tried to identify him with their perspective of a king. The problem with their perspective was, was that the enemy was not Rome under whose oppression they lived. They didn't need deliverance from the Romans. They needed deliverance from sin. We need to realize that the same enemy is after us today. Sin separated us from God way back in the beginning, but faith in Jesus Christ brings us back together. Faith in Jesus Christ brings us back together. It restores our relationship with Jesus Christ. It restores the relationship that sin destroyed. How many of you know the Bible says, how many of us, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I'm preaching about something to you this morning that will change your life completely. The message of the cross is a simple one. It's a simple message. The unfortunate truth of this message, Brother Shannon, is that so many in our world cannot see the simple message of salvation. Why can't they see it? 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world has blinded so many people's minds. They have been blinded. They do not know that there's hope in Christ Jesus. So who's going to tell them?
It's not because that they don't want to. It's because they don't know. I'm going to say this, probably get in trouble. Our guests maybe need to plug their ears. But the only place really where just folks just completely refuse to obey what the Bible says is a lot of times in church. I'm sorry, I'm not meaning to. But people come, I preached it Wednesday night. We've got so far from where God brought us from that we feel like we've arrived and we've made it. We need to remember what it was like when the devils in hell had their clutches around our feet, when they had their clutches on our minds. We got to get another good dose of feeling what it was like when the Lord ripped us out of the hand of the enemy. When the light shined on us, the light of his truth, the light of the power of the revelation of the Holy Ghost. The God of this world has blinded people's minds, even moved into religious circles with just believe and you're saved. Keep on living like you want to live and you're saved. I come to tell you that the Holy Ghost will drag you out of where you've been. The Holy Ghost uh, will pull you back from the very pit of hell. The Holy Ghost will change your life. It change how you think. It change how you talk. It change how you walk. It change everything about you. Here's the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. That word preached is past tense. He's just reiterating to them the gospel that he preached. Now we know, Brother McKinney, that Paul was pretty particular about the gospel. Right? Oh, he said, if I or an angel from heaven come preaching any other doctrine or any other gospel than that you've heard, let him be accursed. There's just one gospel. Can I get an amen? amen? There's just one gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel which we must preach. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which is good news. The word gospel means good news. Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Listen, next verse. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried... And that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now this is a simple reiteration of the message of Peter on the day of Pentecost. When asked by those listening in Acts 2 and 37, I didn't give them to you, but you can put them up there if you want to. When asked by those listening, they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Very simply, Peter said, repent. That's the death. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's the burial. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That, my friends, is the resurrection. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. There's so many that preach a partial gospel, they just talk about the death. Or some just talk about the burial. But we cannot live without the resurrection. We cannot survive without the resurrection. It's there. It's simple. It's in black and white. 
just like for unto us a child is born. Isaiah prophesied it. Jesus fulfilled it, Brother Dole, and they killed him anyway. Here's how we help. According to Romans 8, 9, 10, and 11, the Bible says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Think about this just for a minute. Please hear me right now. Nobody, you don't find nobody that when Jesus started breaking the fish and the bread that said, I don't want none. It's in the Bible. And the way that we know that is he fed 5,000 and had 12 baskets of leftovers. Now think about that just for a minute. Jesus is breaking it. How did we get how did they get too much? Cuz they took a whole lot more than they really needed. They just, as long as he'd break it, I'll keep on taking it. Now hear me right now. They were so happy to enjoy the blessings of following him. He even told them later on, you only come with me for the fishes and the loaves. But Brother McKinney, when it came down to obeying him, they refused. Here's where we got to segue from. Here's where we've got to go from, saints of God. We've got to go from just coming to church and getting our fix to coming to church and hearing the word of God and obeying the word of God and allowing God to change our lives. I have talked to many people. I've talked to Brother Greg and Brother Mark at Bible study. Once we've read the gospel of Jesus Christ, why can't everybody see it? It's just there. But now we looking back, Brother Terry, we looking back, we can't figure out how they crucified him with all those scriptures telling who he was. Over 300 Old Testament scriptures tell about Jesus Christ coming. Where he would be born. It tells Brother David that after he's born, he'll go to Egypt for a little while. It tells he'd be raised up in Nazareth. It tells everything. And it was fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ. And they knew who he was because when he showed up in Nazareth trying to heal people, they said, ah, we can't listen to him. That's just Joseph's son. When he told them before Abraham was, I am, they said, you're not even 50 years old. But he healed the sick, he raised the dead, he walked on the water, he fed them, he did all kinds, and they all embraced it until it came time to follow him, until it came time to obey his word. And then they said, crucify him. We see that and think, how in the world Think about how preposterous, how dumb it is 
Brother McKinney, Peter pulled his sword and cut the guy's ear off in the garden of Gethsemane. This big crowd is fixing to take Jesus out to crucify him. They see this guy get his ear cut off. Blood is running all down the side of his head. His ear's laying on the ground. And Jesus reached down, took the ear, put it back on his head, and healed him. And they still drug him away, Brother David. You think, Brother Pete, that that would have made some people think, oh, man, well, hold on a minute now. Because in that mind of the flesh, Jesus should have said, yeah, get him, Peter. Go ahead and take his head off. You missed a little bit. Chop him again. But no, Jesus healed the servant's ear, Malchus' servant. And Judas and his rabble-rousing gang carried him off to Pilate's judgment hall. But we have a more sure word of prophecy as of a light that shines into a dark place. Here's how we help. If the Spirit's in you, but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Colossians 1 and 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Once you get filled with the Holy Ghost, it's easy as two and two. That's why so many people get bored when we start teaching on the plan of salvation. Because it's just so simple, Brother Pete, when you see it. The riches of the glory of this mystery. What's a mystery? Something not everybody can see. But here's what the Bible tells you what it is. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Jesus was to be wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and he was. If the Holy Ghost is Christ in us, and it is. If the Bible says, whosoever believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water, then it's safe to say that it was the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace that got in me. But the most important thing, Brother Pete, is it's those same attributes that desire to come out of me. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We need signs, wonders, and miracles operating among us. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mark chapter number 16, read it for yourself. We have got to be a counselor. We've got to have the wisdom of God. The Bible... The Bible says, uh, the wisdom ask uh, of God, wisdom that giveth to all men liberally. The Lord gives us his wisdom. Uh, we've got to realize that we walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, which is the, the testimony of the mighty God uh, in Christ Jesus within us, uh, the power of the Spirit. Uh, we've got to remember that we've got to love people. We've got to nurture people. We've got to put our arms around people and accept them and, in fact, be a type of a father to them, a place of security for them them and bless God Almighty when they come to the sanctuary they don't need to hear who's done you wrong they don't need to hear how broke you are they don't need to hear how bad your life is but they need to feel the peace let's just get something established we all got problems So you don't have to tell nobody, all of them. But what we do have is the power, the presence, the spirit, the peace of God that resides within us. But we, Brother David, Brother Terry, 
Brother Johnny had to make a conscious decision to let it out. To let it out. We have to make a conscious effort to let it out. I'm about to close. Probably in about 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> Jesus said, John chapter 9 and verse number 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But then he said, Matthew 5, 14, 16, he says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, uh-oh, and put it under a bushel. But they put it on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world as long as I'm in the world. You know who determines how long he stays in the world? Oh, think about it again. Who did what is the Holy Ghost? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Who determines how long he stays in the world? Holy Ghost filled believers. If the Spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it will also quicken. What's that word quicken mean? means make alive your mortal bodies. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The world has had enough of the counterfeit. They're looking for the real. They have walked blindly after their own desires for far too long. It's our responsibility to let them see him. And by virtue of seeing him, the light will shine, help me here, into a dark place. To let them see there's a better way. Give me the text one more time, Brother Shannon. Let's stand. 2 Peter 1 and 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The power of the revelation of the word of God. They prophesied in Acts chapter number 3, Peter tells them that Moses prophesied of his coming. Every prophet from Samuel to the end of the Old Testament prophesied of his coming. He told Abraham, shall in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And he came. He came with every wonder, with every miraculous move. He came confirming and fulfilling everything he promised. But they were blinded by the God of the world. And they couldn't see him, Brother Chris, and he was right before their face. Right before their face. I would encourage you today, I've given you enough scriptures. The plan of salvation is clear. It's God's plan. It's not mine. It's God's plan. It's God's plan. But I thank God. I thank God that many, many years ago that I came to an altar of repentance. I'm thankful that I was baptized in the only saving name there is, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost 
evidenced by speaking in heavenly language, by speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And God's Word is true. God's Word is true. His promises are true. His Spirit is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. It's not our way. It's not our plan. We can't modify it. We can't change it. It just is what it is. And it's forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word won't pass away. Isaiah said, whose report? Will you believe? And to whom shall the arm of the Lord be revealed? Brother Rice, he also said there's some that won't believe. Having eyes, they won't see. Having ears, they won't hear. They will not believe. They will believe not. I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm thankful that you come for the fishes and the loaves. I'm thankful that you enjoy the singing, enjoy the preaching, enjoy the fellowship. But from the depths of my heart, I'm asking you to obey the word of God. Don't just be following him for the benefits. Obey the word of God and the benefits far. You couldn't care less about the fishes and the loaves anymore. You get something down inside of you that it, it don't matter if he heals ever again. It don't matter if you ever feel another touch. There's something down in you that's changed your life. If any man, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Brother Rush, that's the same word. He makes, he recreates us in his image and likeness. Old things are passed away, Brother McKinney. Behold, all things have become new. I'm going to keep preaching good. I'm going to keep on preaching the Word of God. I'm going to keep on praying, and I'm going to keep on trying to help you. But if you don't ever hear a word I say, hear this. Don't wait too long. Don't wait too long to obey the Word of God. Don't wait too long to obey a simple plan. Brother Rice, all they had to do was accept Him. That's all they had to do. And He healed and He delivered miracle signs and wonders. He brought peace. He brought safety. He delivered them. And yet, when he stood before Pilate, he stood there all alone. If not for two thieves, Brother Chris, he would have died alone. And they were only there because they were crucified as well. Nobody stood with him. And they became the fulfillment of a very sad...